so cool. What's going on, everybody? How's everybody doing on this fabulous Tuesday evening in the middle of October? And uh, I hope we've all had a great week. Fence fam, Facebook, YouTube, uh, no longer doing Twitch. It was just kind of just pointless. But um, how was your week, babe? It was good. Yeah, yeah. Been working on the house. Been working on the house? Yes, makes me happy. Awesome, awesome. Um, yeah, so my week was good. Um, pretty good. Went well. Did a lot of work. And got some fence in the ground. Got a, a couple small projects done per day. So that was always good. Always good. Um, I guess I'm going to leave you to introduce. You don't want to go ahead and say it? Yeah. Or intro what? What am I saying? Hmm? Oh. oh, I thought you were going to. Say how you're actually like going to be in the fence industry now. Oh, no, you can do that. Oh, yeah. No. So, <laughs> um, part of her last week was uh, closing old doors and opening new ones. So, uh, she's got the week off and um, she's going to come into the fence industry, hopefully, maybe, and not just that. Uh, but she's also going to be doing a lot more on the podcast. So, like we were like, have been talking about really pushing this um highlighting the women of fwa once a week so absolutely i'm very excited about that yeah 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 so all right well i'm gonna get into my thing that i like to do every week which is my win and my will uh my loss for the week so uh my win is picking up a uh my new sponsor and that would be jc gurry guys can't wait to work with you guys i see you've already commented we'll get into those in just a minute um loss kind of silly because there were you know quite a few losses but some of them are just kind of like shrugging off but like the biggest one that like really got me was i didn't get to wash my truck this weekend <laughs> that's not what i expected no, no 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 but like since i've been using that uh um, like ceramic plus car wash um that like super expensive one it like builds up and it builds up and it builds up. So all of my tire shine got like thrown off. It got into some water and like thrown off and it's all down the side of the truck. And I was like, man, that, that thing is it's dirty. And you only have one more wash till it's on there for on there for like three to six months yeah. is what it says. But yeah, I oh, missed so it. You did miss that. I, yeah, yeah. So that's a loss in my book. So there's that. Can I get one from you or do you have one? A loss. No, a win and a, a loss. A win and a loss. Uh, my win is going to be that I get to clean my house. And I know that sounds crazy, but I worked for a long time and I just needed a little time to get in there and clean deep. Yeah. So I'm actually super excited about it. Yeah. Um, my loss, I don't really want to call a loss. Uh, I left one profession to pursue another. So I don't really consider that a loss. There we go. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. I'm super proud of you. So <laughs> I can't wait to see where it goes. It's going to be fun. Um, but um, we're, so we were originally just going to have um, like Amanda just have Bailey on her segment tonight. But um, my main my main plan fell through <laughs> last night. And um also, why we didn't go ahead and just move the studio because I had a really cool surprise. Uh, but my main plan fell through. And once again, my main man, Colby, saved me. And he was like, heck, yeah, man, I'll come back on. I was like, all right, cool. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. So without further ado, here is Bailey and Colby Berman. And if you guys don't know, by now, it is Corridor Residential Fencing out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Hi, guys. What's going Hi. on, brother? What's going on, man? How are you doing? Good. 
some fencing today. Yeah, it thundered and rained for the, the first like hour this morning. The one day that I have my ducks in a row and I'm ready to go and start pounding post at like 6:45 in the morning, and it it was I'm not scared of a little rain, but it was like a crazy ass lightning storm. So I was like, yeah, I don't want to yeah. pound. I don't want to pound chain link mm -hmm. posts in a lightning storm necessarily. Mm -hmm. I don't want to pound any post except for yeah. an ag fence post when it's lightning. Okay, even that you still have a giant boom sticking up that's metal and you're yeah. attached to it. I'm sure it's grounded, but you know, yeah. whenever it comes to driving posts, I don't care if it's just sprinkling, man. If it lightning, um, like strikes within like five miles of me, we're done. We're done. <laughs> we're done. I'm not. I'm not doing that. So, um, but um, how was your overall week though? Not too bad. Um, I went and did a bunch of estimates uh, yesterday and uh, this weekend and the end of last week. A couple of them sounds like they're going to move forward, and so that's good. Um, I've been talking with contractors, not in our necessary area, but like an hour or so away from us about um, helping them out with some work when we're slower. Um, so just kind of nice. filling in the voids and doing what we got to do. Nice, nice, nice. Well, and that brings us to the like topic your, of the show. Like your wife, you said, just do, do, having a little time to do stuff around the house isn't a mm -hmm. bad thing either. Man, but. it really isn't, bro. And I'm going to tell you what, like, man, like, if you, like, really know me, then, like, you know my schedule is pretty much sun up to sundown for the most part, except for in the heat of the summer because I'm not working until 9 o'clock at night, right? No. Even though the sun is literally just setting at nine <laughs> and like in the summertime here. Um, but like, so I I get home late. She used to get off at five. We got two kids, so I got to cook dinner. So, you know, a lot of the house chores got put on. Three dogs. Three dogs. <laughs> three dogs. We just showed you our dogs backstage we before did. we came on screen. Um, but uh, yeah, no. So, I mean, it was, it's a sounds crazy but i'm so excited to scrub baseboards <laughs> yeah. i'm sorry i am it's yeah. so satisfying to watch them get clean oh man we but, were um, down our tomato forest that had developed over the summer dude i saw how much you've been canning bro you got enough for like a couple years stocked we, up, man. we harvested over 100 pounds of these little yellow cherry tomatoes and like mm -hmm. as we were harvesting them there were so many that were still green that if it would have stayed warmer for a little longer it would have been good and i was just like oh, so just, it was almost to the point like we just got to give up we can't get them all yeah i was yeah, so excited man, when I saw the tomatoes, but I am a spicy eater. I saw the peppers too. I am so jealous. I don't live closer. I would take all of that off your hands. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh man. Just like just do it. Got some death <laughs> juice. Yeah. Uh, they have the weather for it. We don't. Hmm. I mean, for uh, like tomatoes, yeah, but we can grow some damn good peppers down here. It's awesome because they love the heat. <laughs> but, uh, all right, well, we're going to get into some comments before we get into some actual show talking <laughs> points, guys. And uh, real quick, I forgot to do it because I was so excited to get Bailey on and uh, like Colby on. But uh, guys, thank you to our sponsors. Um, and of course, we have uh, my Mr. Fence Academy Studios, which guys, again, we will be in next week. Um, but that is www.mrfenceacademy.com. Uh, we have National Metal industries that is mr mike levy and i know he's watching um and then our newest sponsor we have jc gurry that is www.jcgurry.com and uh thank you so much guys this would not be possible without you so um with that said we're gonna dive into some comments and like i just said here is jc gurry in the house say hey you two hey guys hey mark hey, hey mary they're the best i hope you guys are doing good they are all right, Evan Gardner, he says, doing great, finished a little 675-foot postmaster job and just picked all the materials for the next two no-dig jobs to finish this week. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. Um, guys, have you been watching his videos on, like, his new wing jack tool? He's like, Sean, dude, it's you got to so keep cool. up. He's like, before, as soon as you figure out the next new thing that's fucking, that came out, he's got another... You know, crazy little tool, but yeah, we're excited yeah. for 
the wingman to come out. She's been, yeah, I've been in my ear on. about it because we do all Postmasters too. So mm -hmm. nice, nice, nice. And did you get to see that tool in action at Demo Days, baby? She might have been there later. I was gonna say I don't think so. Yeah. No. It's well, cool. um, his little tool to get the post out of the ground without damaging them is pretty okay. slow. Oh no, I definitely didn't so, see that. I would have loved that when I had one in my yard. You remember when I put that I beam in the yard? That's what I just said. <laughs> and I could not get it out. I was like, oh, I'll bring a farm jack home tomorrow. Oh, man, I have that thing right out. Man, that yeah. thing sat there for seven months. Can I explain that a little bit? It was twisted. It was bent over. <laughs> like I tried yeah. pulling it so many freaking times. And then one time I just brought the bobcat home and I just pulled it out of the ground because I got tired. <laughs> that's how that's how strong it was. All right. His little tool pulls these I beams straight out of the ground with no damage. Go ahead. I just want to elaborate on why it was there. Yeah. <laughs> Ready? Why? There is no reason. No reason why. No test. My it's husband just... just got really excited about pounding things. Yep. And was like, babe. I need to see how this new pound thing. works. He, no, he wanted me to do it so I could see how it worked. Oh, and I'm like, but why do we need but why do we need this in the middle of our front yard? yard? And he's like, don't worry about it. It'll come right out. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm famous last word. Seven months later, I was like, can you please take this random rod out of my yard? <laughs> <laughs> but I did get to do it. <laughs> but that but that just proves two facts that the uh like the that the wing jack or yeah, no. It is it the wing jack? It's the, the wing jack. jack is the one that helps you build. The wingman. The wingman. Okay, so the wing jack is the one that gets the post out of the ground. Yep. That just goes to prove that that thing is badass. And number two, I beams are badass for um like aluminum fence. Like I know you guys do yeah. steel up there, mm -hmm. but I beams are the way to go for us down here. Oh um, yeah. But moving on, I didn't mean to you know go down a rabbit hole with that, but I do love Mister Evan and his tools are awesome as well. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. All right, we got. Miss Michaela Patterson, she says, "Yay! So excited! That was oh, at the beginning of the show." Um, no. JC Gurry again says, "We are looking forward to working with you. Right back at you. Cannot wait." Oh, really cool couples on here tonight. Bailey and Colby are both some fence ninjas. Yes, they <laughs> are, Miss Badass Bailey and Colby. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, look at these power couples. That's so funny. We almost named the episode that time. We did. We did. We, we did. About I was, it last night naming I was going, power couples. Uh, like back had. and forth. And I had just got done with my, what I thought was going to be my show notes. And I got the um, like text and I was like, Kobe, can you save me? <laughs> well, no, <laughs> actually, you actually texted Bailey. and Yes. I had already us. decided I wanted Bailey. Yeah. I actually didn't yeah. know you were going to do your lovely um, women of FWA interview beforehand. So I did want to kind of condense all the questions here since I didn't want you to double up. Uh, but he was like, we should name it power couples. I was like, well, technically I can't. Cause one Bailey hasn't shown me how to build a fence yet. <laughs> and two, I'm not technically working in the industry. Hey. Oh, you are. You pounded your first post. That the gateway drug right there. <laughs> there, there we go. There we go. All um, right. And Evan says, and that new trailer wrap looks badass. But bro, yeah. by the way, it does. And my favorite code. You sent me a picture of the inside of it. Oh boy. You get it's there. Not, it's not to your level. Yeah. Your level of organization yeah. well, is like well, god tier. Well, well, I mean, to be quite fair, I did inherit that from Sean. And all I really did was put labels on everything and clean it out and put everything up how it was. All of those like battery things and tool things, those were already all up. It's just, it was just bare empty and I just put it in there. Uh, but I do keep it that way though. Mm -hmm. I absolutely do keep it that way. It drives me crazy whenever it's like messy. I'll get down. Uh, like using it or using it for like a training and I'm like oh, it's 6 30 I was like I really don't want to clean this out but I don't want to have to do it next week so I'm gonna do it right now he does it while we travel yeah. 
yeah. at the gas stations he'll stop and be like hold on we lost <laughs> We lost guns. It's we lost normally a tape measure. <laughs> it's normally no, no. Like it's normally the small rivet gun and the damn impact drill that fall okay. off the holders. And it's That's like normally funny. those two, and they've bounced around somewhere. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty bad that I have it down to a science, but mm -hmm. I've driven that trailer like now, I think three thousand miles. So I I can pretty much tell you like if you go about fifty miles, something's falling off. <laughs> something has fallen off. We'd hit a bump and, and you'd be like, hey, yeah, something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Evan says, I don't even take smoke breaks anymore. You are damn right, man. I am eight weeks into no smoking. So, boom, yeah. there's that, guys. If I can do it, you can do it. I promise you that one. I love it. Evan says, there is, is another one coming. I'm assuming that's a tool. Can't wait for it, buddy. More freaking power to you. Keep doing your thing in that level, man. Like, seriously. I adapter plates go on the wing jack. Okay. All right. Heck yeah, man. Well, I saw that and you got it out with no damage. Uh, National Metal Industries says, I'm assuming that says, oi, what is going on, buddy? How are you doing? All right, guys. Well, like our topic says, we are dealing with the winter blues. And for all of my southerners watching who have never been up north, that is a real thing. But at the end of the day, it's also a real thing in business, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Even here in Florida, we yeah. we have winter too, even if it's not freezing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So um with that being said, guys, what is one thing that y'all are really pushing right now? Because I know like we're talking real life at this point. Yep. Um we're gonna start. I've got some door hangers in production, like five or six hundred door hangers that are getting printed. Um I just ran through. Uh, the last of the stash I had, we hang those at every job we go to. I do the neighbors surrounding whatever house we're doing and do something across the street. But we're going to go out. Um, it's a lot of new development where we're at. Cedar Rapids uh, in Iowa, other than like a capital city, is one of the most like de rapidly developing areas. So there's a lot of new neighborhoods that have new houses that don't have fences that um, we're going to go flyer bomb or whatever you want to call it with door hangers. Nice. Nice. We've got snow removal stuff already in the works, even though hopefully uh, that's not something we have to worry about for a few months. Mm -hmm. You know, the longer that gets pushed out to the year, I am more than happy with. But that's kind of good. Yeah. People are already thinking about that for this year. Yeah, yeah. Um, is is travel work in some of your plans or some of yep. the you know? keeping busy whenever it's cold where you live like type thing like is that yeah kind of so that we, you guys deal with up there our service area we've built fences as far as an hour and a half north and south of us in different rural areas and different spots so we've been in uh out of town in ames a lot of this year working on a dot fence so i'm already kind of used to being on the road and being away from home and out of town and working and stuff so I'm more set up to for me to hop in, hook up my tool trailer, and I can come build any style of fence you want me to come build, you know? So Heck yeah. then we've been doing, um, I'm going to start working with uh, another contractor. He's not necessarily local, but it's like an hour, hour and 15 minutes away from us. It's close enough to home that um, it's not a crazy travel time. It's kind of just partnering with people that um, see what we're, what we're about, our quality of work that, you know, they have more stuff than they know what to do with. We just, we're unfortunately one of those markets that it, there's a lot of chucks and trucks and, and there's a lot of uh, people building fence, but I would say only probably five or six companies or should, should be building the fence, you know? So. Right. 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 Um, Me, you want to jump in? Yeah. You want to take the next one? I do. I actually want to talk to Bailey a little. Mm -hmm. I know you just, again, had your um, <laughs> podcast with women at FWA, and there were a few um, things that were going on with uh, breast cancer awareness, so forth. Did you want to tell us a little about that? 
Yeah, the, um, we're doing um, October, of course, is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, we're doing every Friday, post a picture of yourself in a pink shirt um, with the hashtag. Oh, my gosh. Now I'm blanking on the hashtag. I'm the worst in the whole world. Um, it's all over our F socials. FWA. I think it's FWA Pink Friday. Pink strong? Yeah, oh. something, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was at a time and I totally forgot. Um, but posting that, showing support every week, every Friday. And then actually a couple weeks from now, we're doing a little um, week and a half from now, I think. I don't know what the date is. But we're doing a little Halloween social as well. So on October 30th, it's uh, Wednesday at 6.30 Central Time. We're doing like a little virtual happy hour. Uh, we're going to do a little co costume contest. Nothing like super serious. We're just going to get on, hang out, have some drinks. I think uh, Tiffany has some Mad Lib games and everything like that to do. So little socials, get to know everybody. Like we try to do one of those like once a year, just hang out with everyone. Dress up like a slutty witch, you know? Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I love that because Tiffany, I'm sure, is going to be really fun if Tiffany has yes. like reigns of that mm -hmm. too. I mean, I was thinking Elvira, but back off, Colby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to move the roadcaster over here for our next show because I just kept wanting to hit the doom button. I was like, <laughs> over there. I can't hit it right now. I was like, That's no, I can't even hit it. It's not even on the right page. Sorry, oh. sorry, sorry. Keep going. <laughs> No, but that's um for media events. That's um all that we're dr the women are drumming up. But next year we are planning a women's only retreat. Um, we are trying to go someplace that's big enough to host um, us the on the leadership team plus like ten or fifteen women who are interested. And we're um, selling T-shirts and pullovers and stuff to raise some money for that as well. But we wanna we want to know each other. Like, Little bit of deeper, you know, talking about who does every aspect Ooh, of the. You're breaking up really bad. Oh, shit. <laughs> I mean, it might just well, be us. Ours is really hard. I don't know. I don't even know either. All right. Well, hey, we're going to run a commercial real fast and we'll see if that fixes it. And then we'll be right back. All right. All right. National Metal Industries, a family-owned business for 70-plus years, has grown to be recognized for their ability to deliver on not just privacy slats for fence, but all types of fence products. National Metal Industries has all the hardware and tools to get the fence professional in and out of their job with the most ease possible. You can count on National Metal Industries for the most convenient resources in fence products. Visit nmifence.com for more information. As we like to say, you can always pick it right at National. All right. How about now? Are we back? Are we still glitching? Yeah. Oh, see, yeah. look, running the commercial always works, man. I'm telling there you. There we go. Like, all right, it. so Bailey, I, I did want to highlight you today. You were my pick for the highlight <laughs> of the week. I wanted you to tell just a little about, about yourself, why you love the industry. Um, I know it's been, what, four years? Four years, yeah, four, four years this year. Yeah, and I've been... you prefer to be in the field and not the office, which I completely feel. So tell me about yes. it. Yes, yes. It's definitely my happy place. I can kind of like, I don't know what I'm installing and I'm just like going, you just kind of get into a zone and you don't have to like, you don't really have to think much about your next step. You can just continue to keep going. And then once you're done, you've like created something physical, you know, like you can look at it and be like, oh shit, I just built that. And that's pretty dope. But so satisfying. It is. It definitely is. I love it. It's my favorite. <laughs> I feel that. Same. I freaking love it too. I do. Kind of has to do with my cleaning as well. <laughs> it's such a pain, but it's so satisfying. Yes. All right. Evan says postcards. Find a realtor that will share the list of new construction homes sold that week. 
write the address on postcard and mail to them targeting homes that don't have a fence yet and you're the first contact good good idea buddy good idea that is that's kind of the similar similar angle we're trying to hit with the door fly the door hangers or whatever but <clears throat> i was kind of reading that during the commercial break and one thing we do in this time of year when it gets a little slow all the wood fences we built um like the year you know this year or whatever We'll send one of these out to everyone we built the wood fence to on the back. We'll write like an estimate on how much it's going to cost to get their wood fence stained. And we'll send it out to, you know, it's anywhere from 100 to plus people that we send one of these out to every year. And um, unfortunately, people are stubborn and they'd rather let their, their wood deteriorate than stain it sometimes. But we've definitely gotten more jobs off of doing that as far as wood maintenance than we would otherwise. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, man. I saw you guys do a deck not too long ago. So, um, was it yours? Yeah. We've not just theirs, a... but they did also that... a deck. Oh, uh, okay. Cause it was really pretty. <laughs> yeah. We've done a few decks. We did ours recently though, too. We were waiting for it to stop raining all damn year for mm -hmm. us to finally be able to do ours. Right. Right. You got to squeeze in your stuff whenever you're not doing everyone else's stuff. <laughs> so it just gets pushed back and back and back. Just how it is. Absolutely does. I Absolutely get that. does. It's like the old saying goes: like the mechanic's car will probably have a whole lot of things wrong with it. The fencer's oh, yeah. will probably have a whole lot of things wrong with it, yeah. and so on and so forth. Like it's just, it, like it's just one of those things, you know. So mm -hmm. it just gets let's go. But um, uh, so, so I want to get into running ads on facebook and google and uh that's kind of a tricky thing if you're doing it by yourself um are you guys doing any sponsored ads on facebook <clears throat> i actually am going to um I was, i've been sitting down thinking about um what i want to put in it what i want to do exactly but i want to run a, a sponsored ad for all the go back through all the pictures of the winter time installs we've done where there's like snow on the ground and shit and do um like, you know, we specialize in installing fences even when it's cold out because a lot of people in our area, the common theme is they pack up their ball and go home um, and they just have their guys collect seasonal unemployment or whatever. But we've honestly had mild enough winters the last couple of years that other than a handful of weeks, it's been like 45, 50 degrees out, which isn't shit to be out building fence in. No, no. So we're going to... It's not something I'm doing now, but it's it, that's one of the angles I'm going to start working. I've been just going to put something together this week or next week. Nice, and I've had nice. And, luck with and um, like you guys are driving posts, so you can still build mm -hmm. with snow on the ground. Because Even if there's frost, old, so. yep. we can pound through the frost easier than we can dig a hole through yeah. the frost anyway. Absolutely. Absolutely. Bro, so I told you and I told my wife um, – but I was on a commercial job site yesterday and I was making sure we're doing a good handling job um, like right now. Um, and uh, so I was getting all the string lines set for them and making sure that they were set at height so that way they could like get their post height and everything. And uh, I think they were driving a terminal test or something. Like this contractor, like he like pulls up in a truck. I'm like, oh man, this is a nice truck. Like, like it's like the number two guy. Like I've already met the number one guy out there, and so like he's like, "Hey man, I got something for you." I was like, "Do you really?" He was like, "Yeah, man, I do." And he like goes back to his nice ass truck. He pulls out a ready driver, and he was like, "Hey man, here, it don't have no fancy handles like yours has. Like these like <laughs> on like extension handles." But he's like, "It it'll drive a damn post." And I was like, "Okay, hell yeah!" Like. <laughs> You just want to let us use it like while we're out here so we have a couple more and he was like no 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 he's like you can have it we don't use it i was like are you sure about that he was like oh yeah oh yeah man i'm positive i was like hmm okay all right cool yeah i looked at my watch and i was like hmm about time to go back to the shop <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> So I went back to the shop. I didn't even look at it. Like I just put it in the like in the back seat of my truck, and I was like, "All right, cool." So 
I know for a fact, like I saw like the Australian like thing on the back. I was like, that's a ready driver. I like it. I, like I know for a fact. So I get back to the shop and I pull it out and I was like, oh man, it's a damn T-Pose driver. And I was like, man, I was like, but still, hey man, it's a driver. So I go online, I look it up. And I'm like, this man gave me an $1,800 tool. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, dude, even, the, <laughs> even the T-Pose drivers ain't cheap, man. That's crazy. <laughs> I was like, there's no freaking way, man. I was like, I put gasoline in it. I primed it. I, I uh, like choked it, started it right up. And I was like, oh, hell yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, I swear, oh hell yeah. I swear by Ready Driver, dude. We've had the same one for like two and a half years. I haven't had anything major happen to it. Um, change the low rings and seals and stuff in it. But that thing, like you said, choke it, prime it. It pops right off every single time, even when it's cold out. Even after pounding thousands right. and thousands of posts. Yeah. Nice, nice. I mean, I have to say I'm partial to my bull and patriot. So I mean, yeah. yeah. It's but, just easier but, to have a compressor and stuff to run the just that to be off. fairly honest, I have literally never used ready driver. That's the only gas powered one that I have not used. And I used it and I was like, okay, all, all right, this thing will pound some damn T posts. So I'm kind of curious on the actual full size one. So my uh my curiosity is peaked and i know they came out with the new bigger one that competes with the with the um us hammer so there's that oh yeah ours has no problem sinking postmasters 52 inches in the ground mm -hmm. and i've pounded nice. three inch four inch commercial post you know four foot plus in the ground with it too nice nice i mean if i had the um, if i had the nice compressor and the shit to run a a, a pneumatic setup I would or a hydraulic but it's just easier less it's less investment right off the grip to get gas powered right all right no um so you said that you're about to put together a Facebook ad plan right mm-hmm all right so do you know I learned a lot about this on uh, like YouTube. There's a whole like YouTube University part one through 10 about Facebook ads. And bro, you know, like and I'm skipping talking points right now going to this, but it's really cool. Like you can target down to certain streets and neighborhoods. Like you don't even have to even do the whole neighborhood. Like you can target down to certain streets. Now, like you got to do a whole bunch of work like on the back end and know what you're doing. But there's a YouTube University class about this. And one of the biggest things that I hate for us as fencers is when I'm scrolling on Facebook and I'm just like, scroll, 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 scroll. And I'm like, oh, cool, fence ad. They must be local. And I click on it and it's like 15 hours First, away. I'm yeah. like, bro, do you know how much money you're wasting? I'm like, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing this. You are paying for me to see this. I'm like, I feel so bad for you because I've been there. <laughs> I've absolutely been there and just been like da 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 da, hundred dollars a week. I'll just throw it at it, and then I'll get all of these, you know, once for quotes and five, six, seven states away. And I'm like, how the hell does that happen? Mm -hmm. Like, why do I have nobody from my town even? People in like, Idaho hit you up for a fence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Idahoian. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I was trying to make a laugh. I felt that. Oh I was, no, I felt that. I know where that just came from. I was trying to make a laugh right Whatever. There. My shepherd's crab is delicious. Oh no, 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 no. Look, I am sure it 100% is. <laughs> I, <make a> laugh. <laughs> I used instant mashed potatoes. They don't add heroin. I wasn't trying to say that. That's okay. Those ones are good. To say all that. Everything else was made homemade, but I knew I had the podcast. Oh yeah, no, no, no. So I shortcut it. I was just saying because we were laughing. I think that the actual name of it. For, That's because I went back it. to the trash can and I was like, these mashed potatoes are so good. Who made these? I don't <laughs> know. I don't know. Dude, Billy, like works a, Billy works in a sweatshop. He can't even get a microwave to put his lunch in, which I thought was the strangest <laughs> thing ever with all the amigos he works with, that there wasn't like a communal lunchbox. That I just bro, so, I okay, so, bought so, him a lunchbox yeah. that I saw that. plugs into the truck plugs into the truck and heats that's his wild. meal since i do cook homemade every night he can now take homemade food every day yeah that's, that's fire and i no longer I have to put it on top of like the truck and risk fucking 
<laughs> he would put it or on his Andy windshield Cotton. wipers and help by noon it was hot. Oh my god. Yeah, bro, like I would like keep it in the fridge at night and then I'd put it in the cooler, but then like as soon as like it would start getting hot outside, I'd be like, all right, I hope so I don't get sick up. today. And I would go like put it on the hood for it to fucking heat up. Oh my god. And I mean like it gets it, it gets damn hot here. So you know, I mean like your food would always be hot, but I was always scared like am I gonna get food poisoning? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> something else, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, I bro. So the amigos, all right. We cannot split them up because they live together and they're brothers and they share lunch, right? They they bring a fucking giant ass lunch, <laughs> bro. This bitch is like this big by like this big, dude. Oh, I don't know how they keep shit hot in there, but bro, they did, bro. They go pull their lunchbox out of a truck. And they got fucking steaming tacos and, <laughs> oh, and like I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, they I throw have some, a buffet table with the they little throw some hot rocks right there. underneath. Yeah. They get the chafers. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. But uh, man, I can't they just throw a bunch of those little them. those little hand heaters that you shake up to get warm and just throw. <laughs> oh, are those? Hot yeah. Hands, <laughs> hot hands. Put some hot hands yeah. down there and warm it right up. Warm it right up for you. Uh, it's hilarious, but yeah, no. So like, they always have hot lunch, and there's been a lot of times where I'm like eating my food off of the <laughs> uh, windshield of the truck, and I'm like sitting down eating my like white people food, yeah. right? And I'm like looking off to my left, I'm like, God, man, that food looks awesome. You they see the steam me. coming up off of theirs. Let me oh, take on the bottom of my food. <laughs> Fire roasted jalapenos and shit. I swear to God, dude, they they freaking bring me food. Because one time I was like, "You bring me lunch?" And I'm like, "Yeah, oh, 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 lunch? Lunch mañana?" I was like, "Yes, yes, see, sí, see." Sí. Is that the tamales? Uh, that was the tamales. They brought me lunch like like three or four times now. Well, well I have has, to ask. He's failed to mention that to me or bring any back to me, but I did get some tamales. <laughs> well, that's just yeah. because I bring my lunch and then I eat it for breakfast. And then they bring me yeah. their lunch, and then I eat. It's a struggle, lunch. dude. Yeah, but it's only been like four times. <laughs> or, <laughs> but hey, then I'm getting breakfast, right? Then I'm getting breakfast. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, talk. He's a grown boy. Oh He's man, great. we don't talk after this about this. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, so we were also talking about like other forms of revenue. Um, so we did briefly mention staining. Um, um, like, have you guys been to the Stain and Steel University? Yeah, mm-hmm. we went to one a couple of years ago. We haven't been to one since. We always yeah, try really, and check yeah. out their educational stuff if they're like a the fence, any of the fence expos we're at. Um, yeah, but. yeah. Um, that was our first like conference i mean like it was a conference um but like that was our first thing and that was pretty cool yeah yeah it was our my biggest thing was i didn't want to get into it because i knew that it can be uh it's a lot more finicky than than slapping a fence up because there's a lot more variables to stuff you have to know so i didn't want to just jump into it i wanted to make sure we had the Mm -hmm. at least something you know and that was a good good way to get that because we we push and almost exclusively use expert stain and seal. So there's hey, good man, it's people. An awesome product. Mm-hmm. Awesome product. Good people. Um, I can't I can't say enough about it. I mean, like mm-hmm. you can literally if you had the money, take five gallon buckets and throw it on a fence and it would look perfect. Mm-hmm. I love their stain. Our UPS yeah. man like <laughs> even knew oh, us and was <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to say he was mad at us, but he wasn't thrilled when he saw our boxes because he knew yeah. it was gallons of stain and seal. But mm-hmm. it made us be friends with him because he wanted to know, like, hey, what are you doing with all of this heavy stuff mm-hmm. you're making me deliver to you? And we ended up becoming friends with him because yeah. of the stain and seal deliveries. That's why we're still phone. friends with him. I was on the phone whenever I got home, uh, like tonight, and I got out of the truck, and he was driving by, and he like stopped, honked, <laughs> waved, and he, like he realized on the, like on the phone, but like normally he'll stop and get out and like talk to me. Um, That's but, funny. like 
And that's from what four years ago? Oh my god. 2021. Three years ago. So that's from three years ago. And like so February. like we've been we've been pretty cool ever since, man. Like I'll see him like drive it around in our like neighborhood-ish. Like I'll even be like a, he knows like a couple miles away. And <laughs> I'll see a honk and I'm like, who the hell's honking at me? Oh, that's it. Yeah. Oh, that's Chris. That's the UPS man. <laughs> that's great. Hell yeah. Okay. But it all started from stainless steel. It he wanted really to know did. why he had to carry all this heavy stuff to our porch all the time. <laughs> um. So you guys said that you do snow removal, right? Yep. Yeah. Snow mitigation. The verbiage is important. The verbiage is Sometimes important. Yeah. You're not wrong. Sometimes if you say removal, then some people think you're actually going to remove Take the it. snow. And that is you're a thing it. when we get a bunch of snow and we get shit pounded and there's you know 15 20 foot snow drifts and then there's more coming you have to have somewhere to push the snow that's coming so there is like where you come and throw snow piles I'm into jealous. dump trucks and haul them off but some people assume you know there's people have gotten uh caught up by not using the right verbiage that's why i call it snow mitigation okay okay so what does that look like for you guys like i'm talking about like setup wise like so what do you have to have for that our first two years we had my skid loader that we used um i ended up having to put a bunch of money into that and got rid of it just because we've downsized and we're doing no dig now so 90 percent of the jobs are on we don't need a skid loader to move material or dirt or concrete or heavy stuff around um so now we kind of focus on the residential side where we can just show up with snow blowers and shovels and bang out a driveway and then you know uh a group of two guys, uh, depending on if it's one crew or two crews running, you can have two guys do anywhere from 20 to 40 driveways. And uh, they're, they're long shifts, you know, sometimes we're out 18, 20 hours at a time because we'll get uh, overflow people that call kind of last minute too. But um, we kind of focus on the residential side. It's less stuff you have to have. It's less, um, less headaches. You know, you don't have to be there. Like a lot of the commercial – uh, places they want you pushing like every inch of snow that comes they want you moving it and pushing it you know so you constantly have to have someone there kind of maintaining and taking care of it whereas the residential you can kind of just come in bang it out and move on to the next one right right so then you're saying 20 to 40 driveways that's a that's a lot of work yeah anywhere from there our minimum is last year was 45 it'll probably be about the same maybe 50 this year but anywhere from 45 to some of our, you know, bigger driveways, you know, big kind of acreages or whatever. Uh, some of them have been like $150, $200 uh, services. And then it's tiered too. So if it snows two to four inches, it's X amount. If it snows four to six inches, it's X amount. That way, you know, obviously yeah. two inches of snow is a lot less work than eight inches of snow. So Right, right, right. And does that keep you guys pretty busy or, or like, like – Man, when we were Just kids, right after remember, it snows. when we were kids, I remember, you know, Thanksgiving, it's it would snow, and then December it would snow a bunch, and then there'd be two, three foot of snow on the ground and big snow drifts everywhere from the plowing. And, like, I remember when we were kids, a lot more snow than we've had mm -hmm. the last, like, four or five years. Like, the last two snow seasons, we've maybe went out a dozen times, mm -hmm. but, like, you know, both years. Because right, mm -hmm. uh if it only snows like a half inch or an inch, you're not going to go out and do it. No one wants your snow moved anyway because it's just going to melt within two days. So, right. But on the it's flip side, if it's not cold and it's not snowing, we can build fence if there's fence to build. So it's kind of like, you know, it just depends on what. Pennies can, from the sky, baby. It's mm -hmm. it's lucrative. Like you can make just as much money in uh, a 20 hour snow shift uh, with one crew as I do in three days of fencing. So it's lucrative when it happens, but you can't count on it to happen because it's Mother Nature, essentially. Good. Have you ever had that much snow? I know you lived in Maryland. Um, so the only time we ever had that much snow is <laughs> the day that I got in a wreck, and that was absolutely not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Word of God, it was not my fault. Dude, clip me <laughs> from the right side and spun me. I swear to God, it wasn't my fault. <laughs> We're gonna uh, go with it. We're going with it. But no, I mean, 
growing up in Florida and only going to Maryland every other year, like I did not deal with snow a lot until I moved there. And then the first year I moved there, it snowed pretty heavily, um, but not enough. It like it was still too hot. Like it snowed a lot, but it never like really like stuck stuck. Oh, okay. Um, but it was only like two to three inches. But like I said, like the following year when I got a wreck, it was there were some pretty big snow piles. But that was my only ever like real dealing with it. Like I know you've dealt with it a lot. I'm from Georgia and Louisiana, technically, but I did live in uh Virginia for almost 10 years. But no, we had like two snowstorms ever that I couldn't drive well, because, because obviously I don't know how, a lot of it. but that was a, yeah. I guess because I was on the water, I was on the East coast. Mm -hmm. So they <laughs> just didn't get it like that. Yeah, huh. no, no. And Man. um, it snowed once in 94 here in Florida and it was like an inch. <laughs> I think that was 84. No, it was definitely 94 <laughs> because I was born. Oh, um, true. I remember I fell off a tree. I was born in <laughs> Trust me, I know. All right. All right. We had snow in Florida once, 94. Hard to believe. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We had yeah. one white Christmas. Once. That's crazy. <laughs> it was in August, my boy. Wow. That's even August? crazier. No, or like September or something stupid. It was in August, guys. It was in August. September. Like, it, it, oh man, when was it? It was not August. It was probably April, year. randomly. Uh, April. Well, it I wasn't August. I don't know. I know. <laughs> it was 1994. Got that one right. <laughs> the great snowstorm of 94. But, um, yeah, man. So, like i guess like being slow is a real thing um up like like a really real thing like up where like you're at like especially Absolutely. when like the weather hits like i know like we're all facing like an a like, national problem and a lot of it is because of the election people are scared to do scared to spend money regardless of who you're for it's just nobody's spending money right now like around the country um then we're also going into the slow season. We do hit the slow season here as well, but where we kind of bridge the gap is the commercial work. And um, with the commercial work, I mean, it doesn't matter, you know, like who's getting elected or if we got Christmas presents to buy, the commercial work always keeps rolling. So, you know, that's kind of where we bridge the gap. We're on a lot of commercial work right now, uh, but it's, not something to you know fully jump into and that was supposed to be the episode of tonight was uh like commercial work we'll talk about that next week uh can't wait for that in the new studio uh but uh that's kind of how we deal with it uh like down here is uh kind of lean on the commercial side heavy bid a lot of those projects you know mid-summer end of summer so we can get to them whenever we're slow kind of keep us afloat that's nice. Yeah. Got to get into something like that. <laughs> yeah. Our thing is like people yeah. people aren't going to look for someone to come do their fence if they assume that everyone stopped fencing till you know, spring because that's kind yeah. of the general vibe or what they think anyway. So people, people winter, they kind of just hunker down. They're like, oh, no one's even out really fencing right now anyway, probably. Mm. So I built they fencing. Built, we built fencing mm. snow pants. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. I've seen it. I've seen it. Well, well well, right. that, yeah. but that also comes along with, you know, like if you're planning on doing a Facebook ad, bro, talking to all the people that you think are going to buy a fence and the, all the people that you think won't buy a fence right now and just, y'all got the no dig thing down. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there is, there is a great value in that, especially in the winter time because y'all can still build fence. You're not digging holes, right? Oh yeah. yeah. That's nice. But, um. You know, that's kind of part of it. Uh, sucks, but uh, having a plan also works well. Um, you know, putting a little bit of money aside every single job. Go ahead, babe. Kobe, don't you actually do like word woodworking and stuff on the side? No. I no, well, we've done I, some little planner boxes and I, stuff. And in the winter, that's another thing I do in the winter is we have a lot of like 
days in the shop where we just like reorganize everything, uh, tinker and fix mm -hmm. shit that's broken down or needs fix. Or I take a lot of, I'm a bit of a Sanford and son with pilfering usable things <laughs> in my shop. I love I that. Have a huge pole barn and a big uh, gravel lot and another heated space to store shit in. So now that I've got all the space in pallet racks, I hoard everything. Mm -hmm. So I've built like planner boxes and, you know, that was something that I've kind of yeah. gotten into in the winter too. We refurbished an old yeah, too. from a Mexican restaurant and yeah. now we have that reupholstered in our own house. So yeah. Hell do you yeah. think yeah. busy? Yeah. You know? yeah. And are you picking up um, back in the serving world, Bailey? Yeah, yeah. During when we're like super slow in like the actual like winter winter months, then I'll go back uh, more and more days a week at the hotel that I work at. Um, and eight I work years, in, right? Yeah, I've been with them for eight years, and the last four years have been very part time compared to when I first started there, but. I kind of hang on to it throughout the summertime to like go back there during the winter time and you know absolutely guaranteed income is always income you know you gotta absolutely you gotta, mm -hmm. absolutely and yes ma'am and that's kind of what it takes sometimes yeah well know. and also like working in the service industry like i'm really good talking to like our clients too you know like it's a super right. good skill to have I'm never getting rusty on it because I always have to talk to people. So there we go. I know how to kind of go. feel those instances where sometimes Colby gets a little frustrated with people who don't know what they're talking about. And then you got to kind of like do damage control. So I'm really good at that part. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. And, and don't like surprise them in an elevator. Don't do that. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. I tried to fake it yeah. really well. I when you when you surprise us in the elevator, I tried to put on my customer service voice and be like, "Oh, hey," because I had no <laughs> idea who were, But I was like, "I don't know if I've seen her in passing or met her before. I'm not sure." <laughs> and then and tell it really it? real yeah. real quick. <laughs> tell what? Tell it. Tell the story for the viewers. Oh. No, tell <laughs> I don't think she knows what happened. No, no. I don't <laughs> All right. So very quickly, my first big uh, fence industry exposure was at the uh, FWA, the fence show this year. Uh, I had already known who Colby and Bailey were from watching them on my husband's podcast. Well, to me, I watched you. We learned each other. Difference being, I wasn't on it. So you didn't know who I was from anyone. But I was so excited to be there. And um, I did know we were supposed to be meeting up with you guys at some point. So when I saw you in the elevator, did not realize you did not know me. <laughs> yep. Which is why I was like, hey, guy. <laughs> yep. And then I'm also the really worst. Care. I'm the worst with names. I have to be around you yeah. for like a solid two to three days. You've never been around me. I'm not calling you yeah. like buddy or guy. I'm like, yeah. not buddy or dude. Yeah. Everyone's dude. I'm I'm bad with names and faces. To too, me, so. if my husband, if you're friends with him, you're friends with me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah, she told me. She told me I was correct that. So I was like, no, you didn't. But as soon as I was like, I'm Billy Gross' wife, you guys were like, oh my god. Exactly. And, then and it was like a lot okay. better. <laughs> yeah. Then we were like, y'all want to know what's also really cool? Is y'all were my first guest, actual, like first live guest. Mm. And we're not at that year mark yet, but the year for the podcast was last week. Oh, and yeah. here we all are. And here we are a year later. Like, well, I was like, that. Bailey's already my guest. So let's let's get Colby yeah. back. I mean, let's do it yeah. all four of us. Yeah. I love and, it. And and have you know, like y'all were always her favorite. Like anytime <laughs> she would like compare people, she's like, Well, they're not Bailey and Colby. Oh, <laughs> no. I like other people too. Tell well, she does. Does. I love she does, everyone. but she is just comparing the show because yeah. like, I swear to God, that was her favorite episode ever. Like, oh my god, the first I love that. one. That and fun. um, like she's like, Yeah, well, they're not Bailey and Colby though. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't say that. I like other people too. <laughs> she does. She does. She does. But uh man, it's been a great ride. And uh we are coming up on time. Bailey, 
again. Oh goodness, that went fast. Yeah, it did. <laughs> Didn't it? Look at that. Look at that. We're already at 55 minutes and 33 seconds. So, you know, it, fucking time flies when you're having fun, right? Mm -hmm. Bro, there better it's be right some there. anime it's pictures in that, new, in that new studio. There better be some anime What's posters. That? There better be some anime posters in that new studio. Absolutely uh, not. It's not going to be. <laughs> this is room. Stop. He's 14. It's not going to be, bro. There, there is not going to be, man. I am so excited to get in there and... Um, oh, yeah. I plan on going to help set that up. Put some work into it. It's coming, y'all. Right. Just, just be patient. Just know it's coming. Mm -hmm. uh, but Bailey, mm -hmm. go ahead and run us through uh, like your announcements again um, on upcoming events that are coming. Yes, uh, upcoming events that are yep, coming. Yep, we got it. Good lord, we double got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So hey, I remember that hashtag like twenty minutes ago. It like slowly came to me. So so for the so it's October Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Every Friday, where you post a picture of yourself in a pink shirt, and it's hashtag FWA Pink Strong. Um, and I think they're doing a promotion with the magazine about that, if I'm correct. Um, and then on October 30th, we are doing a virtual happy hour. The women of FWA are hosting a virtual happy hour costume contest. Um, October 30th at 6.30 central time. I think it's going to be like a half hour, hour, just a quick little every introductions, get to know each other, have a few drinks, and then do some little, you know, dumb, fun games. Um, and then we are, next year we are hoping to do a women's only retreat. So stay tuned for details on that. We don't have anything super dialed in to um, announce quite yet, but we're super excited about that get more of these women all in one space and get to know each other better. I love that. I love that. Same, same. Um, Colby, are you going to any of the um, fence week things? I didn't plan on it simply because I've got a, any time I've got where something could pop up, I kind of got to stick around here and bang out whatever I can till the end of the year here. No, heck yeah. Heck yeah, man. I love it. I love it. Well, guys, if you can't see, you probably can't see because we got two people up right now, but my fence week in Pace, Florida is officially sold out for free tickets. If you do want to come, I'm sorry. You got to pay, but still be there, guys. It's a week full of training. November 4th through the 9th. Um, the 4th through the 8th will be infield training. The ninth will be a Zoom call uh, with Mr. Sean King himself, and we'll do business stuff. Um, guys, get there or be square. Like if you don't got the money, spend it, man. I'm telling you, just spend it anyways. Spend it anyways. Come to the training. There's a lot of free training still left all around the country, guys. There's 22, 24 locations. Um, get there. Get there, get your guys some training, get some real training in the ground, and uh heck yeah, man. Well, even that's, if you can't make you can't make those those uh like live training days, the virtual stuff is is just as valuable too, if not more. The stuff, the the business side stuff you can learn and you know, I've done virtual uh virtual retreats and stuff where you don't necessarily have to be there to pick up a bunch of gold nuggets. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And even if you can't go, like you said, man, just get get to that business class on the night with Sean. And I think Nico is going to be there as well. But um, just get there. Right. I mean, all really? all the training has got us here. You love the training classes. I do. Uh, yeah. They're awesome. They even though I don't feel awesome. I like to know all the things. Mm -hmm. But uh. Guys, I am going to run uh, Mr. Mike's commercial, and uh, we're going to come back and uh, say our goodbyes. But for our goodbyes between Bailey and Colby, guys, y'all have a wonderful night. Thank you so much again, to Colby, for saving my ass. You guys like are I great. said, I'm trying boy, to I got that script broke, and I was like, oh, shit. I can't <laughs> <do this one." laughs> so I thank you so much for saving my ass again, bro. Yeah, uh, man. I, I liked it guys. though since you were on and then I was going to have her on and then we all ended up being on so I felt like it progressed rather rather nicely. 
Heck yeah. Okay. Heck yeah, I did. And I got to say one thing. Go ahead. Shara Batsbrock. That's my mom. I love you. She had messaged and I never said anything. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, she said better. She said better because she, she was moderating the audio quality. I know. Yeah. But she was letting us know it's the first time that yeah. she's tuned in. Yeah. Hey, mom. Love you. But uh, <laughs> guys, y'all have a wonderful night. We're going to run Mr. Mike's commercial again because Mr. Mike, you are the only commercial right now. Just uh, you and JC Gurry. I'm not done with JC Gurry's commercial yet. So there's that. But y'all, guys, love Thanks you guys. For I'll talk to you soon. All right. Nice. Have a good night. All right. So we're going to run Mr. Mike's commercial again. And once again, that is www.nmifence.com. National Metal Industries, a family-owned business for 70-plus years, has grown to be recognized for their ability to deliver on not just privacy slats for fence, but all types of fence products. National Metal Industries has all the hardware and tools to get the fence professional in and out of their job with the most ease possible. You can count on National Metal Industries for the most convenient resources in fence products. Visit nmifence.com for more information. As we like to say, you can always pick it right at National. All right, guys, we are back, and this is the end of the show. And um, just real quick, of course, we just had the NMI commercial up, guys. Go check out National Metal Industries, www nmifence.com while you're there ask mr mike levy to send you a mailer they're pretty damn badass guys also we want to give a shout out to mr fence academy www.mrfenceacademy.com and next week we will be in the mr fence academy studios the new one and for the last one baby go right ahead jay Seagury. thank you you're amazing. And that is www.jcgurry.com. Guys, we will see y'all next Tuesday, 730. Ladies, if you're watching and you want to be a part of my wife's segment, because it will be segments coming up soon. Yes. Featuring women in the fence industry. Get a hold of my wife. I love women it. Women in the industry. Love wives it. in the industry. Daughters in the industry. All women in the industry. I love you. We'll see y'all next Tuesday.